latest iteration of the Aerodyne Strat by Fender. That's what we're going to be taking a look at today. We're also going to be tackling these topics. Main Japan Fender. Could it actually be better than US made? Basswood. Is it cheap or is it actually a decent tone wood? And the Babix Bridge. Is it all that it's over designed to be? All these topics and more on today's special birthday edition of Ray Plays Guitar. Let's get into it. So this is a Fender Aerodyne Special Stratocaster HSS in Dolphin Gray. And I've always loved the Aerodyne guitars. If you're not familiar with the Aerodyne series, it's a series of guitars that are exclusively made in Japan. And the defining feature of the Aerodyne is its aerodynamic curved top, which gives it a really cool contemporary look and feel. And I love the binding. The first Aerodyne was a jazz bass, I believe. I think it came out in 2003. And then the next year they came out with a Tele and then uh, a Strat model also. The Aerodynes usually have been a, a blend of that sleek, modern, contemporary look with a lot of vintage appointments as well. And those appointments have changed throughout the years. This version is probably the most modern Aerodyne design that they've, uh, that they've put out. These are all made in Japan. Basswood bodies, maple necks, rosewood fretboards. This is a nice piece of rosewood on here, and it's a rosewood slab. It's not that thin veneer. Uh, it's it's a it's a thicker slab, which is nice. It's a C-shaped neck, really super comfortable. I love the the matching headstock, and it's got locking tuners, which is great. They're all they're not staggered. They're all the the the, the lower ones, so you don't really need a a, a string tree, and that's why I took took the strings out of that string tree. You just don't need it. The pickups on here are called Aerodyne Special Pickups. They're their in-house pickups and it has a Babix bridge. This is the first time I've seen a Babix bridge. I wasn't familiar with this bridge before this guitar. And so the deal with this is that you have more contact. It's called the Full Contact Hardware, FCH. So what you have is more string contact with the saddle, and then you have 50% more contact between the saddle and the bridge plate. Hence the name Full Contact Hardware. Um, and it is pretty cool. So the nice thing is that this part of the bridge is all the same height. You won't have, it won't go up and down depending on the string height. We, you can adjust the string height with some Allen keys in the back um, and it and it works by just rotating this little thing here, and it'll raise and lower the string in the middle here without affecting the height here. As far as the feel and everything goes, and the tone, I think it's spectacular. Uh, the replacement Babix bridge has this big, big tailpiece, and it has his, his logo on there and everything. I really like the more vintage look of this, especially on this style of guitar. Yeah, there's just a lot more contact going on, a lot more sustain. And I, I think it's pretty cool. Have you heard of Babix before? Do you have any experience with Babix bridges? Please let us know. Got this plugged into my Sir Badger 30. I'm going straight into the front, but I do have uh, my HX effects plugged in to the uh, effects loop.
These single coils sound great, but I really love this humbucker. It's full, but it's got bite and it's clear. Um, and it's, it, it has, it's, it sounds big. It, it has, I don't know if it's the bridge or the, or the, or the pickup itself or, or the wood or what's going on or just the combination of everything. But I really love this humbucker in this guitar. <laughs> So yeah, this guitar is made in Japan. The craftsmanship on this thing is amazing. This was under a thousand dollars, okay? Under a thousand dollars. And I would put this guitar up against guitars that cost three times that much. I'm not kidding you. It could definitely hold its own. The, the way that this feels with the rolled edges, frets felt great. As far as craftsmanship goes, it's definitely on par with anything I mean, I played some U.S. stuff that I wasn't impressed with. Um, but I haven't played many Japanese-made guitars that I haven't been impressed with. Do you have any Made in Japan Fenders? I would love to hear about it. But as far as I'm concerned, I think the Japanese stuff is phenomenal. This guitar is very, very well made. As far as the craftsmanship, it's a 10! <laughs> And the Japanese factory uses a lot of basswood. I see a lot of people dogging on basswood on the interwebs. And I think it's just because they see a lot of lesser expensive guitars being made with basswood. Actually, a lot of guitars are being made with basswood these days because it's a very uh, available wood, especially in Asia, where a lot of cheaper guitars and this one are made. But that doesn't mean that it's a cheap wood. I mean, ash was a pretty cheap, available wood. And that's why Fender decided to use ash. Basswood is common, and that's why it's inexpensive. And even though it's a hardwood, it's a soft hardwood. So it's a wood that's very easy to work with. But does it sound good? Yes, it does sound good. Y'all have any basswood body guitars? Let me know. Here's my only pet peeve on this guitar. On the single coils, they used traditional staggering on the pole pieces. That staggering was designed for like 13 gauge strings and a wound G. Completely different and probably flat wounds, okay? Completely different situation. And I, for, and I can hear, here, let me back this up. And because of it, I can hear the uh, difference in volume between these strings. You probably can't hear it as much on the phone. But yeah, this B is weak and this G is super strong. And the high E is a little weak too because of those recessed uh, pole pieces. That's really my only complaint about this guitar is that and it's not that big of a deal. I can always change those pickups out anyway. But it would be nice if they didn't, if they just put them flat, then I'd be completely happy. <laughs> but that's their blend of traditional and modern. But I just wish they would have picked a different traditional appointment than that. Anywho. All right, let's play a little bit. Birthday by the Beatles uses a riff based on a dominant seven chord. We have a root. Seven. The riff goes like this. Mm -hmm. 
we're going to add one note to the arpeggio and we'll have all the notes in this riff. The note we're going to add is called the sixth, and it's right next to the flat at seventh. There's our flat at seventh. Here's our sixth. We're going to come back to the fifth and then end on the root. And that's the riff. We're going to play that riff starting from A. Also from D, and then also from E. And that's the main riff from Happy Birthday. And that's my birthday present to you. So I just don't get it on these guitars. The quality is fantastic. They look fantastic. It's kind of like you're getting a custom Strat. And these are selling brand new for one penny under a thousand dollars. Which, like I said, I think it could be easily twice as much. But I think the fact that it's made in Japan keeps that price down. I've seen these used starting at around 700, which is kind of crazy. Like I said, throughout the years, they've had different appointments. The latest ones are a little bit more modern looking. I love them, obviously, because I bought one. So that's a quick look at my new Fender Aerodyne Special Stratocaster HSS in Dolphin Gray. Thanks so much for hanging out with me on my birthday today. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Do me a huge favor. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. But most of all, Thank you very much for hanging out with me today. And I'm going to go eat a bunch of cake. We'll see you next time.